Hey, hi, good evening, everyone. So uh, let's start. I'm sharing my screen. Let me know if you can see my screen. Is it visible to everyone? Uh, no, not yet, but yes, now it is. OK, so I'm in office today. So Nate is a bit slow in office today. Is it visible now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yesterday we saw the we uh, know about the variables, uh, partials, modules, and the uh, nesting thing in SCSS, right? So anyone has any question regarding that? So I can answer that first and go to the next. So, so anyone does not have any questions so let's start so yesterday uh, we uh, so i have created here a basic structure of the sas files i have created a folder okay in a css folder i have created a sas file okay so app.sas it is our main file in that file uh, I have created, I have imported the variable mixing general and that the component. So these all are all are the partials, right? So these partials I have kept in a particular folder in order. So inside that component, I have component, modal, nav, as I explained yesterday. Nav is our different module, so that for that module I have created at nav as partial, and for model I have created. So yesterday we have created it dot nav model and all these things in a uh, single file. So I have <coughs> segregated them in module wise and get create a proper uh, SAS structure here. So this is the uh, 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 SAS structured. Uh, staff says you can use we can follow that in uh, you know, your applications wherever you created our uh, uh, SAS project uh, project which is uh, built with help of SAS you can organize your file this way so in root there will be a main SAS file there will be nothing but only the links of the individual partial files so in in and those partials you can all you can also use this kind of things so I have connected uh, this. I have connected this component. Huh? I have kept the component file. Let close me close these files. So uh, I have closed this all these things. So now this is the uh, component partial. Now click Control click on this files. So on the component file itself, it has only the modal thing. Let import the. Uh, it has uh, uh, one more partial which is a uh, nav so let import nav import space with double quote in a v okay and at the end just add semicolon it, uh, stop the sas watch okay. so i have now imported model and import the nav modules inside the component and call that component in our root file which is app so you can go to that extent to call the functions to call the partials if you have any other uh, if you have any other partials you want to include in model like small model large model so you can include you can click just you can go to the model huh? and instead of this okay you can create three partials for large uh, small and medium you can import that uh, on the model itself so all this can be uh, compiled in one go when you compile the sas so now see a difference so now variable dot sas is a partial size 
let me change that name okay so i am deleting uh, i am why partials are important okay so now it is also a uh, file now it is also a partial file variable dot sas and it's called on the app dot css inside that settings inside that settings i kept that variable it is variable variable dot sas okay so now if i run the whatsapp command uh first delete this okay i am deleting the sas uh, to give you the example uh, i am compiling the uh, run the whatsapp command okay so let's see so once i run the whatsapp command here the app says has been built so which has all the uh, compilation of all our uh, partials including here as well as we have create that variable dot sas is also compiled which is nothing because it has only the variables so it rendered the ultimate uh, product is not shown here so be, so 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 uh, uh okay so do that we have added the to ignore that issue so we have created the partial started with the underscore so if if any partial has underscore before that name that will not include on the what says but it will compile in ultimate app dot says uh, when compile the app dot says but it will not uh, compile individually when we run the what says command okay so that is the main difference uh, between the mm, the name the, without uh, the underscore in first of the partial without the underscore name. okay now i am delete that variable now i run the whatsapp command again okay see the whatsapp command has been run and that app and app.css has been created but that that variable.css and variable uh, map.css is not created because we have we uh, separate that we uh, send the command that not include this variable.css file scss file and create the compiled file okay so if i delete this and then only the app css and app css file is created okay so this is one important thing uh, left on the the partial part so i showed you to uh, today the what is what is important of underscore and this is the name thing because it is a main file main partial that's why i uh, identified it with the double underscore and inside that i have called the child uh, the child partials so it will not in it will as well as not uh, included on the compilation okay so uh, model mixing variables okay so today uh, i have uh, today uh, tomorrow i uh, sorry yesterday i show you the create how to create the variable uh, we will start with dollar sign so i have created the color variable you can create any variable like uh, dollar base font and inside that just use that uh font. so on my generic i have used that so now Oh. on base font variable i have assigned the value to all my font families whatever i required for my for my application and uh, and wherever we need our font so you can use that base font variable instead of font family see here i have uh, mentioned the property and instead of entire value i just mentioned the variable name 
same for the background color same for the color even this is a different thing uh, today i'll show you what is it uh, and uh, it mentioned the font size okay so you can create any variable only not for the uh, primary or not for the color even on for the font size even for the border radius okay so dollar dollar border radius you mentioned 5 px okay px this is the border radius variable so now if you if uh, you want anything uh, anywhere on the we so go to the let's go to the motor okay. and i need uh, on the h2 on the learning heading i need a border radius border radius what is the value of the border radius just mention it that or you can you can water radius yes that means small assign that value to the water radius it will create it will uh, once i render this once i uh, run this okay so go to the let's go to the sas file okay and where is the model 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 yeah so model header h2 okay large heading font size 30 pixel see the border radius 5 pixel has added here so whatever you want to use uh multiple time in your application in your css just mention that on as a variable and use that your styles so this is the uh, small recap of the variables uh, now let's go to the main part which is mixing mixing is uh, just like a function mixings are just like a function uh, you all are using on your uh, programming language like uh, react uh, javascript angular whatever you use so this is kind of a function okay so i have created uh, a few uh, mixings and explain the way uh, these uh, mixings are very useful so i have created them and i will show you explain one by one each and every mixings to you so see as as the uh, what's what's is running now so whenever you save any any file any of these files you work any of these files and save them that sas watch is running automatically and it will compile and uh, added the changes to the app.css so whenever you changes in on any file just i just added a uh, remove a space and i have just uh, added a space and space see that sas is done continuously running okay and is building the app.css file added the changes to the app.css file for now i'm stopping that okay so first uh this is the box shadow okay so i have created a, a mixing box shadow so how we can create a mixing so mixing always start with uh at the rate with mixing keyword and then you you add a name uh uh a particular name which is uh, related for that functions okay say paddy i'm creating a uh, padding mixing okay so mixing padding okay with within the first bracket i have uh, assign a variable you can thing as a parameter how we use inside the function okay inside the function you are assigning uh, parameters and what the value to that parameter that this is the same thing uh, in css so i am assigning a parameter uh, value 
and inside that functions inside that mixing i am adding next step adding So I'm creating a mixing spadding lift. It is a mixing, a simple mixing uh, spadding lift. Uh, assign a parameter, pass the parameter uh, on inside that function. Okay, here and inside the mixing, I added the padding lift property and pass the uh, parameter on that value. In place of value, I pass the parameter. Okay, so how? This is a. I have created a mixing uh, for padding lift. Now use that mixing. Okay. So let's go to the model okay. on H two again. Um, adding. Let's add that mixing. Use that mixing. So to use mixing, you have to include direct include. That name of that mixing that was adding left and inside that uh, padding left mixing, just mention that value you want to pass the through the mixing. So I added twenty px. Okay. So now, so I have created a mixing for padding left. Okay. Started with the padding left. And inside that uh, function, I have added the value parameter was the parameter value. So when I apply that mixing, just mention that as a include. Use include as a keyword to include that mix. I'm including that mixing to this uh, CSS. Name of that mixing padding left and 20 pixel is the value. So I want to basically I want to add padding left 20 pixel. So that's why I have created this mixing. This is a simple mixing. Now save this. So where I added that in model header H2. Now let's check that on model header H2. A padding left is added 20 pixel. So this was a simple mixing. Okay, I have created a mixing for the padding lift and use that. Now I will explain the uh, a bit complicated ex, uh, uh, mixings to you. Started with uh, started with from top box shadow. Okay, so we use the box shadow property. We use the box shadow property on the uh, CSS. So box shadow, each which has I have passed four parameter left top radius color as box shadow where box shadow needs needs this four property to render to create that effect we need the shadow from the left that's why it is a left parameter we need a value from the top that's why top we need the border radius box shadow radius shadow radius property and we need a color so in C, if you uh, now i am adding box shadow Leave top radius color four property. I passed, I passed these four parameter in the box shadow. Okay, so if I use them on the uh, model, okay, so model, let's add uh, mixing. Now. Okay, see, here is nothing H1. Okay. So on the generic side, H1 mixing general, it's general H1. Okay. On H1, I'm adding the box shadow, not H1, on the mm. Um, containers. So let's add that on the mixing steam on the
So form container with 400 px x is like I have created a margin. Yeah. So I have created up uh, margin mixing here. I'm using. I'm. I will use that here. So include margin or PPX okay. now mm, include the box shadow okay and inside that box shadow mixing I just mentioned that pass that value of those uh, four parameters right first left is let C A two then four two pixel mm, four pixel in pixel and uh so in uh box shadow we have four parameter left top border radius and color so i just added the value i just added those four values okay two let's mean uh, two for the top left four ten for the border radius and the color zero so now watch and take the Done this again. Is general source not added in sir? Generic general form container. Container uh, nav is here. Container from container generic. Container is there. Container is here. Body is here. Star is also here. Model body is here. It has some error. Um, the body end um, is working properly. Okay, this is duplicated. That's fine. Okay. 
Okay, so my bad. <laughs> so uh, on the uh, if you have uh, mentioned that uh, multiple parameter, if you have multiple parameter on the uh, inside that function, so that is that has a, a comma. So that's why it giving error. So I did not put that comma. No. Now, uh, see, two pixel, four pixel, ten pixel. So, I miss that. Uh, if we have multiple parameters that is uh, separated with comma, and that uh, pattern we have to on the box shadow. Okay, so two pixel, four pixel, ten pixel. Now, so now it's uh, included and it's working here. If you refresh this and uh, see uh, the box shadow is added here. Okay, now uh, on the on that box shadow, uh, let's add a background color. Background, background color. Mm -hmm. What was our uh, variable? What is our variable? So I added this primary light. We don't have light as let's add it a color color lightest variable is added and instead of that this is uh the the box shadow is added now now i'm using one more uh mixing here include border radius So I have added water radius mixing as well. So try to add it the mixing at the uh, start in that uh, class and later that uh, static value. You can also use this uh, as a uh, mixing event. You can create the mixings for weight, height, and the background color. And inside that uh, value, you use that pass that parameter value so now see the border how the border radius mixing works okay so here i have already created the mixing for border radius and i pass the radius parameter inside that border radius and with value mention the property border radius in the mixings and pass the value so this will create this so include border radius and pass the value 20 pixel it will add the 20 pixel value here okay now the question you can ask is uh for margin adding and uh, border radius in the in border radius we have only kept one value as a parameter can i pass the multiple value to the border radius for four corners so that is a very common question so yes, we can. So how we can do that? So to do that, we have a second border radius. So border radius for all. So this is the uh, mixing for the border radius, which have four different values in four corners. 
So I have created this way border ready. Okay, top left. It the border radius for the top left one. Top right, bottom right, bottom left. Okay, so it will the always that border radius, that padding value, that margin value will. If you if you have four different value on uh, either four point, so it will uh, run with the clockwise. So starting from the top left, then top right, then bottom right, then bottom left. So it it it, it will go this way, the clockwise way. So uh, here I have mentioned that border top left radius. I pass the value top left inside that border top radius property. Inside that, I pass the word top property. So, like, like this way, this four property I have passed the four parameters. Okay, now let's uh, change that uh, border radius of that uh, box. Mm -hmm. So, now border ready. Okay, so 20 pixel I started with. Then I add 30 pixel. Now let's add 20 pixel. <laughs> so I uh, added four different values. So you can add four different values. I have added two different values to the four corners. Okay. Now click this. So this is 20 pixel, this is 30 pixel, this is 20 pixel, and this is 30 pixel. So if Wherever you have four different values, or you want to apply four different values, you can add them like this way using a mixing as well. So those are the, you. You can do the same thing for the margin, for the padding. Okay, you can do that for the same all for this. Wherever you have multiple uh, parameter, you need to pass parameter multiple values. Just pass the those multiple parameter inside that mixing and edit those parameter to the value of that mixing. So uh, one interest, one more interesting thing here: uh, the color, the gradient. So I I told you earlier that we can create a CSS gradient. Hmm. Uh, so now today we will create the CSS gradient with help of mixing so mixing gradient uh, that has a uh, very quick way you can use uh, use the gradient i show you that uh, this one you can install this uh, plug into your uh, browser that is colorzilla okay so for the pick up the colors so very quickly you can use the css gradient from that uh, from that plugin so I'm creating the CSS gradient. Just click CSS gradient generator. Okay, it will open a window. You can choose the any of this uh, predefined gradient from the list. Okay, just copy this. Copy this entire thing. First, I'll show you how to create the gradient. Uh, uh, and I'm adding that to the first general, then mixing. Okay. Then in so comment this one. Okay. So uh, it has added the gradient to that uh, entire background without using any of image so earlier in css2 we have to we have to cut a one pixel size image repeat that from left to right or top to bottom to create this kind of effect but in css3 we can very easily create a, a gradient background um, yeah, very easily with help of uh, this gradient thing okay so we can you can write that this entire gradient code yourself or you can use the colorzilla it is a very useful tool to create the gradient instantly even you can change that uh, uh, you can change that position um, the orientation to horizontal this come horizontal you can go to vertical you can diagonally 
you can direct radial as well. Okay, so see radial gradient. Even you can you can uh, you can you can add color here. So just click on that, add a point, and change your color whatever you want to add on that. Okay, looks very bad. So change it to horizontal. Now copy that copy. Replace the entire thing. Remove these lines. This is not recorded at all. So which uh which one is required for which browser it is mentioned here okay see the beautiful color background yeah so now it is a, a static gradient okay so if you if you uh, want to use multiple gradient uh, uh, this, uh especially on your uh, buttons background so you have to add this kind of uh the code everywhere uh, on your uh, CSS. So reduce that effort. So we use mixing. We we are using um, how why we use functions to reduce our effort. So we have to reuse that function in our code. So to do that, we have created a uh, background function mixing. Okay. So we have created a background mixing here, the gradient mixing. We just it is a mixing name you can by the way you can change this name this can be border radius this can be mark gaps this these names are uh, you can anything you can give the name okay so i have added the gradient name here i have passed two parameter color one or color two you can add color three color four as as you mm -hmm. Where was that? Ah, okay, so see here, here we have three colors one, two, three. Okay, so you can add that color as well. So I have added two colors background color, background that this code and this, uh, this code are same. Okay, here we just mentioned that, keep that on the uh, mixing. So start color hash uh, color i have mentioned the color one end color end color color two background image linear grid. this is a filter for the mozilla color one i have mentioned the color one and color two this is the uh, for chrome and safari color one and color two so i just replace those color values to the my parameter other than that nothing is nothing is changed here so just I have, if I che if I added here three color, I have passed the three parameter. So color one, color two, color three. So in everywhere for the web kit, for the linear, for the Mozilla, everywhere I have to add just the pass that uh, parameter, same code and create is as a mixing. So the same thing I did here. Okay. So uh, now how you can use this? Uh, uh, include the two in uh, include the name of the mixing and inside that. Pass that the value. First one and the comma. I have two with there, so I just pass the two value. So I don't need the entire thing here. Okay. That is the beauty of 
mixing. So I just uh, pass the, uh, I just include that mixing and pass two parameter uh, in that mixing, two value to that uh, mixing. Okay. See, uh, now you press that. See, that two color is added here. The gradient has been generated. So if I add the red one, beautiful gradient generated so you don't need to write the entire large code everywhere wherever you need to add the gradient. you just include this or you, you just include this and mention the two color here so that will work as the whole code will work if you now if you run the app.css see the entire code is built here. Okay. That background color to see the back for border radius, for different border radius, you have to write that this four line. In mixings, in mixings, you just write this line. On the uh, general CSS for the four border radius, you have just included this one. For box shadow, just this one. For, for uh, gradient, this one. And it will create this much code box shadow water ideas background colors the filter and all those things okay. so mixing is very good thing so try to much uh, try to use as much as possible the mixing so gradient mixing now uh, uh now i'll show you the uh, font size mixing so uh, when we uh, when we uh, work on the CSS file, CSS. So when you work on the CSS, we know that we have multiple um, uh, multiple units for the font size, right? I explain how px, pt, rem uh, that will work, em that will work. So here um, we go for that uh, that thing. We will go to revise that thing. Okay. So for the font size, so name is uh, the most effective way to uh, include the for the font size, because if you mention that uh, the 16 pixel in the root, and uh, uh, and put that uh, font size in rem value, it will automatically change with respect to the 16. Okay. So here I have used that uh, thing. So for font size, I have created the uh, mixing for the font size and inside that parameter I have added size value right and for font size what I did I have created a calculation so size value divided by 16 I added rem as a unit to that value okay so size value whatever i have uh, i will pass uh, on my css on my sas that size value that will divided by 16 and that will that will add a rem or rem uh, unit to that so now on general see i have included i have i added I added that mixing into and font size in font size uh, mixing. I just add 16. Okay, so I just add 16. So what, how it works? If I add 16, as for the uh, as for the mixing, it will divide by uh, 16 and add a rem to the ultimate finish CSS. So let's check. Is it work or not? Okay, so see. Here the font size is now one rem. Okay, so now if I have, uh, if I add, root. Remember this tag root. So this is the root, and I added 
font size equal to 18 px. So now see it it, it changed. Now go to body and one EM, one RDM. So now that font size 18 e 18 RDM, 18 pixel, right? And it is one RDM. So it is related to the 18 pixel. So throughout the application, now the body font size has been changed to 18. So earlier it was 16 because the default root uh, font size is 16. See, the, the, check that uh, the H1 value of the H1 is 2.5 RDM. I am not changing this value. This is 2.5 RDM. I am changing just the root size font. Right. Now mention it 20. It is still 2.5 REM, but it changes value. Now 2.5 REM means 2 times of 20 and that 0.5. Then it means almost uh, 50 pixels. This font size is 50 pixels. If I mention here 16, it is 2.5 of 16. That means uh, 40 pixels. So that's uh, this is the this. So so whatever I have used uh, in uh, font size, so value in six divided by sixteen and then REM. So it will it will convert and ultimate output was uh, output was uh, six. If I maintain sixteen here, so it will one REM that will change if uh, comparatively whatever we mention on the root. So these are the uh, few mixings. You can create your, create your own mixings uh, individually. Uh, you can use them in your application. So now uh, this is uh, you. So let's take uh, some question from you. So anyone has anything related to mixing it is very interesting thing you can play around with mixings and create your own mixings and use them so anyone has any question no no one has no question for mixings So now uh, let's quickly know one more thing that is uh, extend. So on component, let's add one more file. Button dot SCS. Okay, now add that button here. See. The name of the file is uh, underscore button dot SCS, yeah. but when I import that, I just write that file name without that extension, the file name extension without that uh, underscore. Okay, so it uh, whenever you got sign it will show you here. So I miss that uh, semicolon that. 
on that gradient. So on general, this is one semicolon should be here. Now it's successful. So on the button, let's add a dot. Let's use the mixing. Include ten pixel. Order order none writing five pigs ten minutes. Include font size fourteen. Fourteen. On weight seven hundred. Okay, so I have created a button class here. Now I am creating a dot. Button primary. So here I have created two classes. One is button and one is button primary, right? So on button classes, I have added. Uh, I have used this. I have added here. Okay. So all this I have written here. Now button and It's better So uh, what I did here, so I have added a button. I have uh, created a button class. Okay, and for button primary, I just extend that button entire button class inside my button primary, and change the button color uh, background color to blue. So if I use this button class to any button, it will add that uh, this property. And if I add button primary, I don't need to. I need this property, but I don't need to add them here. I just extend that. Okay, extend that entire button classes this way. Just extend dot class name, whatever which class I need to extend. I added that class name here with extend keyword and add that. Now I I am using that okay button primary to my. Oh. So uh, 
button background color and font color so color uh, color color i test background color dollar primary let's add variable in them the submit button had a now i have only write to these two lines for the in button primary okay so two lines but we have see the button primary has only these two lines but with button and button primary these classes are common these styles are common border radius font size font weight border and padding all these things are common for button and button primary. why this is common because i have extended the button into the button primary okay so all these properties are common for this word so i have now if i need to just create another thing another class button so i'm copying into thing we have any error yes we have error accept one so button in background color lightest okay so i can change this uh, as well so now button here in the mixing on the general cells from container we have two button submit uh, one is for the button primary and second is for button error see the same thing button error has two property here rest of the things are coming here button button error button primary all have the same classes are so it will it will reduce uh, the development time as well as it will reduce the files file size it, this extend thing okay this uh, this extend thing is very useful to reduce the file size as well because i don't need to uh, write the entire thing again and again okay i use that as a i extending the uh, classes and use them in multiple so even you can create a mixing for button okay the same way so you have uh, you have pair pass the parameter like font weight border padding and color and background color with five property you have created a, a button mixing and wherever you need that uh, button it just mention those things that will complete in one line okay. so you can you can play with that the mixings and the uh, extend things the inheritance things so these are the uh, few important things in uh, scss for today the mixing the main thing was mixing few few thing was from the uh, variables and the file structures partial why the underscore of the file structure uh, of the file name is important how it works actually so these things we know today uh today in our session so tomorrow we'll uh, know about more uh, regarding the sas thing so any one has any anyone has any question for the same So, yeah. Mm, yes, uh, Pratanda, mm, I, I want to learn BME guidelines. So, I want, can you, mm, okay, uh, BM, what is the BME guideline in next session? Cover the BME guideline. Okay. So, yeah. So, that is the base module, the element structure. 
i will show you tomorrow we yeah. will see once tomorrow okay yeah. i will show you how to write that uh, the act in proper bme code structure that is the prop actually a naming convention and the structure i will show you tomorrow remember me once okay yeah, thank you yeah so anyone has anything else no problem. okay so uh, any one of you has any issue with uh, uh, if i if i ship this uh, session uh, only for uh, friday to uh, 12 to 1 or 11 to 2, 1 11 to 12 11 to 12 is fine mm -hmm. yes better than 11 to 12 11 to yeah. 12 so yes, uh, we have like kind of around 11 30 to 12 so 11 30 to 12 so yeah. okay so actually uh i will uh, i will be not there on the second half uh after uh 3 3 30 to 4 uh friday i will uh, wrap up my day early uh for the friday so if if he if you can suggest me a time uh, from uh end time to 10 to 3 so I will look okay with that. So uh, ping the suitable time uh, in uh, 11 to 10 to 3, any time between 10 to 3, that will help. OK. So I can uh, take that session on, on that day 